Hi, this is Empowering Introductory Algebra, the series created to assist students to overcome any basic algebra deficiencies and build a strong foundation leading to those college-level studies. I'm Bob Young, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Pavard Community College. With the help of my fantastic WBCC crew, we will bring you introductory algebra lessons like no other. Let's pick it up where we left off and we'll show you why. Now, in our last episode, we discussed the five essential power rules. So I'm going to go back to some examples of those, and we're going to go ahead and review those first off. So power rules in review. We talked about power rule number one. Whenever we multiply same bases, we add the power. So a to the x times a to the y power equals a to the x plus y power. Okay. When you divide same bases, power rule number two, a to the x divided by a to the y, the rule is subtract the powers. Now remember, it depends on which power is larger here, so we can subtract up and say a to the x minus y power, or we could subtract down and say 1 over a to the y minus x power. All right, so it just depends on which of these powers is the higher um, degree as we're going to see today. All right, so you can subtract up or subtract down, and many instructors refer to this rule here. You always want to keep those powers positives on the exponents. Power rule three, any base raised to the zero power equals the number one. Okay, so anything to the zero power one. Power rule four, if you have a negative power rule, and this stems from the second power rule here, to make the negative power into a positive one, you can take it downstairs there. All right, so a negative power in the numerator becomes positive in the denominator. Or if you have a negative power in the bottom to make it positive, you simply move it up to the top. So that would be a to the x power there. And the fifth power rule, whenever you have a power raised to a power, multiply the power. So a to the x power raised to the y power is a to the x times y power. Now, those five rules, these five rules here by themselves, I don't think are too, too problematic for some. But when they start mixing them together, they start mixing these rules, we can get into some interesting problems. And we're going to look at that in the next set of examples here. So notice here, they try to make things a little more complicated, but don't let that bother you. Now in the numerator, we're going to use power rule number one. We're multiplying same bases here, so we're going to go ahead and add the powers on the three and the four here. So a to the third times a to the fourth gives us a to the seventh. All right, and I'll go ahead and make a little notation here. This is using rule number one. And on the bottom, we have a power raised to a power. So the rule there is, this is power rule number five multiply the powers to get a to the 10th power. So now we have a to the 7th divided by a to the 10th. Now when we divide same bases, this is rule number 2. We're going to subtract the powers. Now are we going to subtract them up or down? Well, if we subtract up, we're going to have a negative power. Therefore, we want to subtract down 10 minus 7 and keep that exponent positive on that base. All right, so that is. Um, so in some of the examples we're doing now, we will use a combined power rule. We'll use different ones to get to this answer. Now, you know, you can go to a lot of instructors on these, and a lot of instructors will use different rules at different times. So, I mean, it's not necessarily my way or the highway on all these as I do some of these. So don't feel discouraged if, if you don't start out the way I went. You'll end, as long as we end up with the same bottom line, you're going to be okay. All right, next example, we have x times y raised to the 0 power versus xy in parentheses to the 0 power. Now, again, there's that difference between parentheses and non-parentheses that we've been emphasizing throughout. In this first example, only the y is being raised to the 0 power. So in reality, this is x times 1, which gives us x for the answer. Because anything to the 0 power, remember, is 1. 
whereas in the second one here, x, y in parentheses raised to the zero power, all of that becomes one. So anything raised to the zero power is one. So just another example of the difference between parentheses and non-parentheses there. Continuing, lots of examples on today's episodes. These exponential rules drive students crazy, so we want to make sure we master them well. Okay, now on this one, we have a to the negative fourth power times a to the fifth times a to the negative seventh. Now, see, depending on which way you go, there's a couple different ways you can attack this. You could use power rule number one and add all these exponents together. Or some students might say, well, let's take this a to the negative four and write it as one over a to the fourth. Does not matter. Does not matter which way you go. So I'm going to go ahead and start out and just put them all together using power rule number one. And you can refer back into you know, the last episode and write down all these power rules if you miss those. So if we add the powers here, negative four plus five is going to give us a positive one. Added to a negative seven here, we're going to end up with a a to the negative six power. All right. Now, we don't want this negative exponent, so we're going to have to use rule number four next. And remember, the, um, this is called the reciprocal rule because anything, anytime you have a negative power in the numerator, it becomes a positive power in the denominator. And we showed why in the last episode on that as well. So in the examples today, we're going to be combining power rules to get to where we need to go. All right, and the next example, this little basic one here drives students crazy sometimes. When you have y here divided by y to the negative first power. Now remember, if there's not a power here in the numerator, put one. Anything to the first power is itself. All right, now you can use rule number two here. Let's just show you there are several different ways to think about this. If you use rule number two, you would subtract the powers. And I'll actually show that step here. You would write y to the one subtract a negative one, which would, there's that old double negative property we haven't seen since the first few episodes, and that gives us y squared for the answer. All right, or you could have looked at this and say, hey, I want to use power rule number four here and take this negative y to the, or y to the negative first power and move it to the top, which makes it then y to the first power. So there's that reciprocal rule again. Taking a negative to the numerator makes it positive. And look what we end up with. y to the first times y to the first, we end up in the same spot. So lots of ways to go about these. But if you use your power rules correctly, you'll get to the same place. All right, a few more examples here. And we'll show you where you use some of these power rules in real life next. Now, in this example, notice everything in the parentheses is being raised to the second power. So we want to square everything in here. And remember, this is power rule number five. We're going to multiply these exponents together. We're going to multiply every exponent in the parentheses by the two. Now, Young, I don't see a parentheses on, or I don't see an exponent on the three or on the x here. Put one. That's three to the first power x to the first power. So if they don't have an exponent, you can put one and now multiply every exponent by two and we'll end up with three squared, x squared, y to the fourth power. So there's our power rule five when multiplying or raising a power to a powers, multiply the powers. And then we'll just go ahead and write that bottom here, four x, y to the negative third power. Now, what's wrong with this? There's lots of things we can do now. Now, students will go, oh, which rule? I want to go ahead and deal with the x's or deal with the y's. You know, and there's all kinds of things you can do to deal with these. So just don't panic here. Let's go ahead and deal with the x's first. Now, this is going to be power rule number two. We're going to subtract the exponents here. And also, we can go ahead and take care of that three squared. Let's go ahead and make three squared nine. Leave that four in the bottom. So we'll have the number parts done. x to the second. Um, subtract an x to the first, that's going to leave us with an x to the first in the numerator. Right. Now, how about the y's, Young? What am I going to do with those? Well, there's that rule again. You can subtract the exponents here. 4 subtract negative 3, you'll get y to the seventh in the top. Or you could use power rule number 4. A lot of students like to use this fourth power rule and just take that negative power and move it upstairs and it becomes a positive power. So we end up either case with y to the seventh power in the numerator. 
So you have to really watch out with these fractional ones with exponents because some things end up in the numerator of the fraction while other things end up in the denominator. So I know y'all love fractions out there. It's one of your favorite things. And the last example is also fractional here. Now again, we have a whole fraction inside parentheses raised to this negative third power. So we can take the reciprocal of what's in here. This is power rule number four. And that x to the fourth divided by two, the reciprocal is two over x to the fourth. And then the power becomes positive. All right, so using rule four, we went from here to here. Now what? Well, we've got all of this in here raised to the third power, so the fifth power rule says go ahead and multiply the exponents in here. Now again, you can put a one on the two there. That's two to the first power. And we'll end up with a final answer of two to the third power divided by x to the twelfth power. And then some textbooks will also clean up the two to the third and go ahead and make that eight. So it'd be eight over x to the twelfth power. So notice I use power rule four to go ahead and go from here to here, five to go from here to here. Now, there might be other students that would have started a different way. They could have used power rule five first. They would have went ahead and multiplied the powers by negative three, that's fine. We can put a one on the two here, and we'll end up with x to the negative 12 divided by two to the negative third power. So we could have went this direction as well using the fifth power rule first. And then what's wrong with this picture? Well, we've got these negative exponents, Young. We can't have it. So then we would go ahead and use rule number four, okay, and take the reciprocals here. So two to the negative third power in the denominator becomes two to the third power in the numerator, and vice versa. X to the negative 12th power in the numerator becomes X to the 12th power in the denominator same place. See, so it doesn't really, as long as you use the correct rules and use them wisely, you're going to end up in the same ballpark. So that's good.